What's poppin' YouTube? Today we are talking about the common mistakes made when color grading commercials. This is not a how-to step-by-step video, it's more so a how-to video in terms of theory and how to approach and tackle a commercial look. Hands up, hold it or I'll shoot. You're gonna shoot? Damn it, what the f Perfect, just perfect. Today of all days, would it, is that a fucking spray painted banana? So getting into this, you can see, Here's our, here's our sort of node, node tree, and I kind of threw in a little curveball here. I kind of started on the wrong foot. I'm going to do a CST. If you guys know about CST, you know that you need an input and an output. There is no output, it's just an input. Things can get very squirrely, very crazy, but don't be afraid because you just got to find what works for you. And in this case, we're going to make it work for us. Um, so first things first, turn on our CST. And the first thing I wanted, I came in and did was add a bit of contrast. And what I'm going for here is just to create a bit of separation between the highlights. So the stuff in this window, the specular highlights, I wanna create a little bit of separation. I wanna create a little bit of separation in the shadow and mid-tones. So that's what we're trying to achieve here in our contrast node is just that we're tweaking these sort of levels to give a bit of presence to each. Next, in exposure, we're just going to get everything bright enough to a point where we're able to work with it. This is not going to be our final final exposure. It's just, again, giving everything a little bit of separation so we can start to push and pull and sort each sort of value. Following that, what I like to do is just to add a little bit of saturation. We're just going to add a little bit of more presence so that in our next step, we're able to really push, pull, and separate everything so that it has its own sort of space. So the way I did it is that I took the background, kind of lowered the shadows a little bit, and added a bit of coolness to the shadows. Following that, I selected my skin tones and I sort of gave that a little bit of presence. So already you can sort of see that, you know, he looks sick here. He looks like he has some sort of terminal illness, but we just simply created a little bit of contrast, gave his skin back some color, and he's looking a lot better. Next step, we just sort of, sort of did that, but instead of on our character here, we did it to our background. Not only that, we have our background, we have a character, but these little accents of the plants and these little things in our background, we wanna be able to just give that a little bit of presence as well so that we're able to push, pull, and separate everything in our next subsequent steps. So already at this point here, this is where we're at, and this is where we started from. And already, you can see that we're about like halfway there and that wasn't too long. So what I like to do next is just to add a little bit of global presence. So global is something I like to use across the board where if whatever I'm doing doesn't apply to the skin tones or the shadows or whatever, it sort of applies to the entire image. In this case, I took everything, increased the highlights to get it closer to that high key world and I gave the overall image a little bit more saturation. You can see that here. So again, in the highlights, I kind of increased the reds a little bit in the highlights. I then took the saturation across the board and increased it as well as the shadows so that, again, we're just really just fine tuning and separating all of our elements piece by piece. So look, that's without the shadows. That's with the shadows. You can see everything has a little bit more clarity. You can see what these things are now. And then, in the next step, we're gonna kind of work on the other end of things. So we're gonna kind of add a little bit of highlights, leave our shadows and give everything a little bit more body there. So again, our highlights have been bumped up across the board and you can see things like this floor are starting to really come to life. Things like skin tones are really starting to come to life. And this is really close to a final commercial look. Like a lot of people, if they parked it here, they'd be happy, they move on to the next clip and you would not be a super villain if you did that. However, my friends, we are not done. There's a little bit more that you can do. We have a little, little, little sauce I'd like to add in at this point called LUTs. So Lens Distortions has a really, really nice little library. You guys can check them out. I think we're gonna put a link in the description. They are not affiliates, we just simply like them. And this is a really quick and easy way to be able to just experiment with different sorts of looks. Like you could just see how this looks or how this looks or how that looks. And they're really just marginal changes, but these marginal changes are give you enough inspiration to sort of push your world 
into a, a little bit more of a creative space without being like over the top and having your work look like Ozark. So again, we were 90% there with these LUTs, we're about 95%, we're almost there. Things are looking really great, but there is a little thing I like to do personally to all of my work that is just, it, it's great. And that is this. So what we have here is our glow effect with a few different adjustments. So if I show you what this looks like without it's, it's, it's just not good. All right, everything is kind of blooming and weird and it's just not a good place to be. However, what I've done here is I switched my composite type from add over to soft light. And what that does is that it really just helps out smooth out the roll off from the highlight to the midtones. And it also blooms giving you the sense of atmosphere. See how the back window sort of blooms? All the bright points kind of blooming. You could adjust that with this shine threshold slider here. And that is really a nice way to give your scene a little bit of atmosphere, a little bit of texture in the air and the highlights without using a cheesy black pearl mist or a, you know, a, a, a circular filter on your footage. And again, it just sort of helps give that extra bit of treatment to your footage so that it feels like a much higher end production. So here we are at the end, but he's just kind of like, I, I don't know, I don't know, what does it look like? And you just flip that bad boy on and off. You could definitely say that we're much more in this commercial world here than where we started off with. That is all I have for you today. Again, I am Brandon from Label. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and let us know what you would like to see in the next one.